Now after the introduction of material science, now we want to look at the crystalline materials. As I told you, solids could be crystalline or non-crystalline. So we are going to look at the crystalline solids. And to start with, we shall first look at the crystal geometry because I said while talking about the crystalline solids, there is an arrangement of atoms in crystalline solids which is periodically repeating. What is that arrangement, etc., we have to understand. That is what I call geometry of crystals. In this, first of all, we shall talk about the space lattices, which is arrangement of points in three dimensional space, which is in a periodically repeating manner, so that we understand what the periodically repeating arrangement is. Then on this arrangement of points, we associate either one atom or a group of atoms or maybe molecules shall be the crystal structure. Once we have understood this, we shall look at little more into the volume of the crystals, the directions, then the planes and that shall come the next. So we shall start with today the space lattices. A space lattice can be defined as an infinite array of points in three dimensional space such that every point has surroundings identical to any other point. We shall try to understand this. Of course, the infinite you understand what is infinite and this identical surrounding we shall try to understand with the help of a two dimensional picture which is much more easy for us to understand and then we can extrapolate this to the three dimensions. Here is a lattice of points what I am calling the space lattice. Just do not worry about the extremities. I have already said it is infinite, right. Let us see the surroundings of a point. Let us consider this point. From this point, let us say we look upwards like this and we see a point at this distance, let us call this distance A. Let us look up another point, go in the same direction, the same distance, you see another point there, alright. From the same point, let us go in this direction, which is slightly different. So let us go in this direction, call this a B direction. I start from this point, go in the same direction, at the same distance I find another point. That should do anywhere, this is what I mean by identical surroundings. You stand on any lattice point, see yourself in any direction, a chosen direction, you see a certain symmetry stand on another lattice point, see in the same direction, you see the same sim, sim, uh, scenery around you, you see in any direction for that matter, that is the meaning of identical surrounding. Just to give you an example of identical surroundings, another example, let us say I have grown a plant jungle with trees, which are identical trees and they have grown identically, they look identical which usually is not the case, all trees look very different like all human beings look different. But let us say they are all identical and I leave you in that jungle. You move from one place to another, keep moving but after some time you will be lost, you would not know where you are, where you started from and where you ended. 
because wherever it, uh, whichever tree you go to you will find you are the same place unless you have kept track of your sta steps you have moved around you will not know where you started from and where you have ended that is the meaning of identical surroundings that is what this is also showing right all right then well this is what I have tried to show in a different kind of a arrangement of points it is not similar arrangement which I showed you earlier but there also you can see the surroundings are identical from various points I have gone in various directions and these show that at the same distance you find the lattice point in that particular direction that is again also to say it is a periodically repeating arrangement in other words if I am going in this particular direction all the way after this distance every time I shall see a next lattice point next lattice point and a next lattice point that distance is the same that is a period at which the lattice point is repeating in this particular direction another thing you notice that this period is not same in all directions in this direction the period is this it is this distance while in this direction I have another period so much more longer period so periodicity would be different in different directions and same thing is true in three dimensions right now if I have to understand the locations understand this arrangement I should be translating from one place to another in this and my movement have to be defined usually in a two dimensional space you can define this with the help of two vectors which are non collinear ok. So for example you take this one as A and this one as B any movement you want to define you can define with the help of these two vectors say for example I want to define this movement from here to there it would be one of A second of A and then I move one of B in this direction so this is two of A plus one of B like that I can define if it is a three dimensional space lattice what do I need I need three vectors which are non coplanar three vectors which are non coplanar and I can define the movement right the next thing is if I want to represent this infinite I already said it is infinite and try to understand as a finite thing I have to take some part of it a finite part of it and try to understand it right you shall look into that right as I already said that in order to define our translations in three dimensional space we need three non coplanar vectors and this I define as in the in terms of rather fundamental lattice translation vectors now since it is a space lattice lattice I said in on three dimension array of points points are geometrical points having no physical dimensions no physical entities just geometrical points right so which to define the translation I just showed you two vectors a and b which two to be chosen and what is the minimum vector which you choose so any direction you choose choice is yours but in that direction the distance between two nearest lattice points because that is the periodicity of repetition in that direction say for example here let us talk about one 
one vector a in this direction this is the minimum distance between two lattice points in that direction and let us take another one in this direction this is the minimum distance between two and let's call it b you could have chosen any other direction right but i have chosen this now with the help of this it is possible for us to define all translations and it's also possible for us to select from here a finite part using these two fundamental vectors form a parallelogram right if you had decided to choose this as a and decided to choose this as b then you would form a parallelogram like this this is another finite which is representing this infinite okay similarly somebody decided to choose this as a this as b you can make a parallelogram like that which could be a rectangle because between these two vectors what is this angle nobody knows we don't know yet but we once we choose we can define that angle we we'll measure it and define that right so that is what how we can try to look at this infinite with the help of the finite part of it i showed you a parallelogram formed by the two fundamental lattice transition vector taken in two dimensional space in three dimensional space the same thing will form a parallel pipette this is what is called a cell like in this case this cell is formed here this is a cell and the three uh, lattice transition vectors directions i have shown the their magnitudes are let's call them a here b there its magnitude is from this origin to there and its magnitude of the c is here so unit vector is from here to there let's put that with an arrow from origin to there these are the unit vectors this may not be of the same size because periodicity in a particular direction is different it's not need not be same in all directions it can be but need not be okay and then we also define the angles between a and b here is defined as gamma and angle between a and c is defined as beta and the angle between c and b is defined as alpha it's easy to remember between a and b it is c which is meeting missing a b c is one order alpha beta gamma is another order c is missing so it should be called gamma between a and c b is meeting missing it should be called beta and similarly between a and c yeah it is b is missing so it is beta between a and b c is missing it is gamma and between a b and c it is a missing it is alpha that's how the angles are defined right and we have also seen in two dimensional space in a space lattice i can have more than one kind of cells more than one shapes of the cells more than one size of the cell which is finite part because i have taken a fundamental lattice transition vector in a given direction 
and that may give me a either a bigger object or a smaller object okay right so there are could be variety of cells out of these all cells are not used for representation we use only some cells or a particular cell to represent usually well before i talk about that particular cell for representation among the cells which is the smallest in the given lattice is called the primitive cell the such a smallest cell will have the lattice points only at the eight corners of the cell nowhere else in the volume of the cell a lattice point is there such a cell is called the primitive cell it is the smallest i cannot have any cell smaller than this because i said i will choose the three translation vectors fundamental lattice translation vector from one lattice point to the next let us say one i have chosen is here second one i have chosen is there and third one i have chosen is here i cannot have anything smaller than that but if i have chosen abc such that there are some lattice points lying within the volume of the cell then of course it is not the smallest then it has more lattice points in it this one has effectively only one lattice point in it because such parallel pipettes will be shared at every corner and at any corner there will be eight such cells Uh, eight quadrants or eight <coughs> octants what you call and eight octants each one would have a cell like this and therefore there would be each corner shared by eight cells within the volume of the cell the contribution is only one eighth and therefore there is effectively only one lattice point within the volume of the cell that's another characteristic of the primitive cell there is only one lattice point within the volume of the cell or this is the volume occupied by one lattice point in the three dimensional space okay now coming to choosing a particular cell to represent the infinite space lattice we make use of the conventionally bravais space lattices in here a unit cell is so chosen that it contains all the or the maximum possible symmetries of the space lattice and it has the smallest possible size before coming to the size i have given some idea about the smallness of the size but i have to talk about the characteristics of the space lattice which are the symmetries of the space lattice okay symmetries of the space lattice if we look at could be translational symmetry rotational symmetry reflection symmetry let's uh, let's come back here and let me say this is a square space lattice with this is one translation vector another translation vector b here a is equal to b in magnitude if it is a square lattice because cell which is formed will be a square angle between a and b should be 90 degrees in this translational symmetry is inherent in the definition of the space lattice 
what did we say every point has surroundings identical to any other point so if i travel from this point and translate myself to this position or translate myself to that position i reach an identical place i reach i as if i have not moved at all this is what i mean by translational symmetry we shall spend little more time on the translation a uh, rotational symmetry and do not worry about the reflection symmetry in this course if i make a cell like this is one cell of course and i consider an axis perpendicular to the plane and rotate this square about this axis and standing myself at one place let us say viewing from here i rotate this square i see the same thing four times in one full rotation of the square after it is rotated by 90 degrees what i am going to see is this side is another 90 degrees i shall see this this another 90 degrees i shall see that and after 360 i shall see the same thing back now if i ask you to stand yourself here because infinite is not easy to rotate you stand yourself there rotate yourself by 360 degrees whatever scenery you are seeing here after 90 degrees of rotation you will see the same thing here after another 90 degrees you shall see the same thing there after another 90 degrees you shall see the same thing there and after 90 degrees you come back to the same place so in one full rotation you are seeing the same thing four times it is called four fold rotational symmetry it is called four fold rotational symmetry had you been seeing the same thing twice it would have been two fold rotational symmetry let me show you two fold rotational symmetry let us take a cell which is a parallelogram you rotate rotate this cell about its axis let us say like this you rotate what do you see you see the same same arrangement only after 180 degrees rotation after 180 degrees rotation this side will come here and this side will go there after 90 degrees you don't see the same thing after 90 degrees rotation what you are going to see is in this case right this is what you will see after 90 degrees this would become vertical that will also become vertical and these sides will be there this is not the same thing standing here i am seeing this is not the same thing which i see so parallelogram shows only two fold rotational symmetry same is true about a rectangle rectangle shows only two fold rotational symmetry right similarly if i have an hexagon what will it show six fold rotational symmetry <coughs> right so that's what i mean by rotational symmetry which is present in and it is there in the space lattice it's a characteristic of the space lattice all right so we have told you something about the translational symmetry which is inherent in the definition of the space lattice i have showed you what i mean by rotational symmetry and 
I said do not worry about the reflection symmetry. So, the cell which I choose has to be such that it has the maximum possible symmetries with the minimum possible size and that is what is referred to as the Brave unit cell or Brave space lattice that is what is used conventionally for representing these space lattices. Between the cubic space lattice or the square space lattice which I showed you two dimensional square space lattice I showed you a cell which is square I showed you another cell which was a parallelogram which one we shall we choose square square shows me fourfold rotational symmetry and the area of the two is the same area is not different. So, size is the small and I cannot have smaller than that because the primitive only the four corners are the lattice points it is the smallest and the one which has the maximum symmetry is the square that is what has been done and Brave found that there are only 14 possible arrangements of space lattices which belong to 7 crystal classes because <coughs> I have to consider maximum symmetry and the minimum size that is what I have emphasized so far. You have understood the meaning of the maximum symmetry and we have also understood the meaning of the minimum size and then we also have talked about the space lattice is an infinite arrangement of points where every point has identical surroundings in three dimensional space ok. Now, we shall look at these 14 possible arrangements in 7 crystal classes one by one. First of all before talking about this uh, 7 crystal classes I am giving you the kind of unit cells we shall see in these 14 space lattices ok. One is where I just define only a primitive cell where 8 corners are the lattice points. these 8 corners are the lattice points this is called a primitive cell that is one kind of cell we will see. The second kind of unit cell we shall see where there is one lattice point also present in the center of the body that is the center of gravity of the unit cell. Right? It has 8 corners and one body center. Right? that is the second one. Now, the third one is 8 corners and 6 face centers all right. Uh, let me put this face centers in a different color so that you can distinguish top face center bottom face center, right side, left side, the front and the back. Lattice points are located at these locations. This is called a face centered cell. All the 6 face centers and the 8 corners are there. Okay. Then the fourth one will come across let us uh, 
all right the fourth one is eight corners and two face centers of the opposite faces like this or left and right or the front and the back or only one pair such a cell is called end centered or the base centered I have seen the simple or the primitive body centered then face centered then we have seen now seeing now the end centered or the base centered from this it is possible for us to find out effectively within the volume of the cell how many lattice points are there okay in the first one uh, eight corners i just said there will be only one second one the one is within the body center that is within the volume of the cell and corners give one so that makes it 1 plus 1 Yes. So there are two in the cell, two lattice points. Then All right. You are trying to ask me the difference between a primitive cell and a unit cell. <coughs> unit cell, I said, is the one which is going to represent the infinite space lattice, and it has to be such that it has all the possible symmetries or the maximum <coughs> possible symmetries of the space lattice, but still the minimum size. <coughs> that means it is not necessarily the primitive it can be bigger than the primitive as long as it can show me all the symmetries we go in for a bigger size is it clear so primitive one is the only one which will have one this has two now this one which has six face centers a face is always common between two cells so one lattice point on the face is shared by two cells so therefore 6 by 2 is 3 plus 1 which is coming from the corners it makes it 4 you see you can have 4 primitive cells in this while you can have 2 primitive cells in the second one you can have 4 primitive cells in the third one ok now coming to the last one how many will be there 1 plus 1 again 2 right all right this is the kind of cells we are going to come across think uh, there is one more which i would like to say which normally because i have defined the cells to be parallel pipettes drawn by taking the three translation vectors or the fundamental lattice translation vectors if i do that in a hexagonal unit cell hexagonal unit cell let us first look at in the two dimensional space I make a regular hexagon angle bit here is 120 degrees lattice points are at the corners and lattice point also has to be in the center here without this lattice point which is in the center it cannot define the space lattice or it does not satisfy the definition of the space lattice because if I start from this place I go this direction that much distance I find next lattice point if this lattice point is not there from here I shall have to travel the double the distance So, this is a necessary point has to be there. So, if I take this as the A vector, this as the B vector, then parallel pipe drawn will become a parallelogram like this. But the parallelogram shows me only two fold rotational symmetry, it does not show me six fold rotational symmetry. Only when I put some more of these together, that is one parallelogram of the same size here and half of that there another half here I can get a regular hexagon and I can now 
show the six fold rotational symmetry here right so we have to make a hexagonal prism <coughs> the base is going to be regular hexagon and the c axis the third axis will be perpendicular to this right that shall be a hexagonal prism and will be looking like this Where the lattice points are going to be at the 12 corners of the prism, and one center in the base here, and one center in the base of the hexagon there. Can you tell me how many lattice points are there? Yes, there are three because each corner is not shared by eight unit cells, it is shared by three unit cells, one here, second here and the third there because of the angle of 120 degrees. So, 12 <coughs> corners each is shared by six unit cells, so 12 by 6. it makes it 2 and then we have to add on to this, this one and this one which is shared by 2 unit cells, so 2 by 2 that makes it 3. So, effective lattice points are 3 in this hexagonal unit cell. All right. Now, the 7 crystal classes and we can quickly go over them. First one is called a cubic crystal class, where we define A is equal to B is equal to C, angle alpha is equal to angle beta is equal to angle gamma is equal to 90 degrees. So, how many constants A, B, C, alpha, beta, gamma out of the 6 constants which any unit cell is going to have? In case of cubic crystal, how many do I have to define? I need to define only one. I need to define only one. Angles are already 90 degrees. I do not have to define them. Now, A, B, C definition is left to you. You can define this as unit A, you can define this as unit B. right and you can define this as unit C and angle of course will be accordingly A and B is gamma, B and C is alpha and A and C is going to be beta there. And here I have three A kind of cells, different cells, simple. Where are the lattice points? Corners. Only corners, 8 corners. Body centered, where are the lattice points? One and center. 8 corners and 1 body center. And face centered? Oh, the and the 6 face centers. No other cell or no other distribution of lattice points we find. I told you 5, out of this only 3 are here. Okay? The fifth one we will find only in hexagon, nowhere else.
the second crystal class is tetragonal crystal class where A is equal to B is not equal to C and alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma is equal to 90 degrees. Now, how many do I have to define? Two. Two. I have to define A and C and in here I have only two arrangements. One is primitive or simple tetragon and second one I have 8 corners and one body center which is called the body center tetragonal. You see the space lattice is I told you simple body centered, face centered, end centered or the base centered. Now what I am doing you can see that simple one simple tetragonal because that gives me the crystal class and crystal class define the 6 parameters. Then the body centered tetragonal right. So, that is the makes it 3 plus 2 5. All right. Then we have an orthorhombic crystal class in where A is equal to B sorry not equal to B not equal to C alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma is equal to 90 degrees. This one is rectangular prism okay. and uh, tetragon was a square prism. Here I have 4 all the 4 simple orthorhombic means only 8 corners that is a primitive body centered 8 corners and 1 body center face centered orthorhombic 8 corners and 6 face centers and centered orthorhombic 8 corners and 2 opposite faces. Opposite faces let us okay, uh, define this as the A, this as the B and that as the C. Then if I have a face center here and at the bottom what do I call it A center or the B center or a C center? It will be called A center because the plane which or the face which has the center does not have the A axis in it. It has only B axis and C axis okay right. So similarly if a face is front face it will be called the C center, side faces will be called the B center depending upon what you are called A, what you are called B and what you are called C and here I need to define all 3 axes A, B and C, their magnitudes need to be defined. So, I need 3 of them, angles are 90 degrees they are already defined. So, that makes it how much 3 plus 2, 5 plus 4, 9. Yes. Yeah, you have a you have a question which I was going to leave for you to answer this. The question is asking is that we have shown simple cubic, body centered cubic, face centered cubic, but when I came to tetragonal I showed simple tetragonal and body center tetragonal I did not show the face center tetragonal and either I did not show the a end centered cube nor I had shown the end centered tetragonal right. This I am leaving a problem you have to answer and I can only give the hint the hint is we are choosing that cell which shows maximum symmetries and maintains the minimum size shows the maximum symmetries and maintains the minimum size is that clear right
All right, next one is the hexagonal crystal class, which I also defined for you. A is equal to B is not equal to C, <coughs> alpha is equal to beta is equal to 90 degrees, gamma is equal to 120 degrees. How many lattice parameters we have to define here? <coughs> 2, A and C, height of the prism and the side of the prism, hexagonal side of the prism. There is only one, it is simply which I just showed that is a simple hexagonal or most commonly we simply call it the hexagonal. The next one we have a rhombohedral crystal class where A is equal to B is equal to C, alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma is not 90 degrees. There is also only one primitive in this, a rhombohedral or simple rhombohedral unit cell and we need to define only two, two parameters A and alpha. <coughs> All right. Next we have sixth crystal class is monoclinic where In the monoclinic crystal class, we have A not equal to B not equal to C alpha not equal to <coughs> sorry alpha equal to beta is not equal to gamma um, sorry this one should be written slightly differently alpha is equal to beta is equal to 90 degrees and it is not equal to gamma. So, here I need to define four parameters A, B, C and gamma. So, that is a monoclinic crystal class in this I have one simple monoclinic only at the eight corners of the unit cell the lattice points are there. Second one is the end centered monoclinic where lattice points are at the 8 corners and the two opposite faces, but the two opposite faces could be either A or B, it is not the C. Okay. Because if you make it, the base will be a parallelogram where this is the A axis, that is the B axis. C is perpendicular to this 
let's draw that like this so if I make a center on the C which is here I can make a smaller parallelogram like this it will be a smaller cell so C center is not there A center the front the back or the left or the right those centers are allowed they become the end centered monoclinic then the last one crystal class is the triclinic where A is not equal to B is not equal to C alpha is not equal to beta is not equal to gamma and they need not be 90 degrees now before I proceed further I have counted 14 of these I have to make the difference between two kinds of things one I have showed here alpha equal to beta equal to 90 degrees and the other kind of thing which I am showing as A is not equal to B is not equal to C so there is one sign is equal to another sign is not equal to their understanding and interpretation is very important for a cube I said A is equal to B is equal to C alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma is equal to 90 degrees if A, B, C are not equal and A is let us say 3.01 angstrom and B is 3 angstrom difference is 0 0.01 angstrom will it be a cube <coughs> let's say 0 0.01 is negligible when I talk about a crystal in the dimensions of 4 centimeters or 5 centimeters I would have had a difference of millions of unit cells in one direction with that difference of 0 0.01 angstrom <coughs> right so equal to is a very rigid relationship but when I say not equal to I am not so very rigid what I am trying to say is these parameters are not related in any way <coughs> and they can take independent values once they are taking independent values they are not related once such independent value could happen that two are equal <coughs> if that happens and symmetries of the unit cell do not change symmetries do not change it shall remain whatever crystal class it is but the moment the symmetries change because something has become equal <coughs> it will go to a higher crystal class with higher symmetries then only its name would change say for example I talk of a triclinic crystal a is not equal to B is not equal to C and alpha is not equal to beta not equal to gamma in 90 degrees let us say it has no symmetry as a matter of fact highly unsymmetric crystal it is I say A is 3.01 angstrom B is 2.5 angstrom and C is also 2.5 angstrom alpha is 57.8 degree beta is 67.9 degrees and of course gamma is 85 degrees by making B and C equal has it become monoclinic next higher symmetry it has not so it is still triclinic it will remain triclinic it does not satisfy the relationship with any other crystal class it does not have the symmetries of any other crystal class it remains triclinic so you have to be careful with the meaning of this equal to and not equal to equal to a very rigid relationship I cannot accept an iota as a difference 
and not equal to means they take independent values all right all right this is what we shall take in the next class